Welcome back, fellow prospectors. Today, we delve into a critical aspect of surviving Prometheus, the weather. I'm IG from Infinity Gaming, and in this comprehensive guide, we'll break down the intricacies of the weather system. From understanding the forecast overlay to navigating the storms of different biomes, we've got you covered. So, strap in as we embark on this crucial journey through the skies of Icarus. Let's dive in. Chapter 1, Weather Overview All right, prospectors, let's kick things off with an in-depth look at the weather system in Icarus. Understanding the weather forecast overlay is paramount, as it can be the difference between a successful mission and a disastrous one. Now, when you glance at the top right of your screen, you'll find the weather forecast overlay. It provides a three-day forecast, broken down into multiple weather blocks, with each block lasting anywhere from 20 to 60 minutes. Keep in mind, an Icarus day is roughly 67 minutes and 40 seconds. Within each of these blocks, a storm ranging from five to nine minutes will occur, and its severity is indicated by both color and symbol. Let's break it down from tier zero, the calmest, green with no swirls, to tier six, the deadliest, red with six swirls. The symbol grows with the storm's intensity, showcasing swirls corresponding to the tier. Now here's the catch. Storms have a 25% chance to upgrade or downgrade, leaving a 50% chance to remain the same. So that tier five storm might escalate to a tier six or drop to a tier four. Always keep an eye on that forecast. For open world players, a repeating forecast pattern named the mid peak is the norm. On normal difficulty, it follows the mid-peak pattern with tiers 1, 3, 4, 3, 2, each corresponding to a specific duration. Easy difficulty lowers the tiers by one, while hard mode raises them by one, offering varied challenges. Players accepting operations missions witness changes based on the mission and difficulty, adding a dynamic element to the forecast. Credits to Sarah from the Icarus Discord for contributing valuable data on weather forecast patterns and specific storm durations. Chapter two, storm damage to buildings. Now that we've got a grip on how the forecast works, let's delve into the nitty gritty of storm damage to our beloved structures. Buckle up, it's about to get stormy. When a storm hits, it comes with different zones of severity, color coded as green, yellow, and red. Each zone corresponds to specific damage points, impacting various building materials. Let's talk building tiers. We've got thatch at tier one, interior wood at tier two, and so on. The tougher the material, the higher the tier. For instance, stone, aluminum, clay brick, scoria, scoria brick, and reinforced glass sit at tier six. Now, here's the kicker. Storms have damage points and buildings below the tier specified by the damage points will take damage. Let me break it down for you. A tier six ember storm has a red zone with a seven damage point. Any building below tier seven will suffer damage. Concrete, sitting at tier eight, is the hard nut to crack. As of now, there's no storm that damages concrete. So if you're looking for storm resistant structures, concrete is the way to go. These storm mechanics add a layer of strategy to construction. Planning your base material based on the biome's prevalent storms is crucial. Chapter three, storm exposure and resistance. All right, prospectors, let's dive into the art of weathering the storm. Quite literally, I'm talking about exposure resistance, a lifesaver when the tempest comes knocking. Ooh, that's kind of small. Yikes. That's quite big. Impressive. What did he say?
one eternity later. Exposure resistance is your shield against storm exposure. It slows down the buildup, giving you a crucial window to seek shelter. Now, how do you beef up this resistance? Starting with your trusty Enviro suit, the Larkwell Bulwark Enviro suit is your go-to, offering a solid plus 25% exposure resistance. Crafted from Red Exotics, it's a game changer. Armor matters too. The Tier 4 composite armor provides a hefty plus 27% exposure resistance. You can craft this beauty in a Tier 4 electric textiles bench using composites. Don't forget the little things. The Storm Rider 2 helmet attachment packs plus 10% exposure resistance. Every bit counts, right? Now, let's talk food buffs. Pumpkins are your friends here, offering exposure resistance. Some fish fillets and specific food recipes with pumpkins also chip in. And talents don't sleep on them. Weathering the storm in the adventure exploration tree gives you plus 15% exposure resistance when you spend three talent points. But that's not all. In your element, in the adventure husbandry tree grants plus 10% exposure resistance while mounted with two talent points spent. And for you anglers out there, nice day for fishing, ain't it? In the adventure fishing tree throws in plus 10% exposure resistance with two talent points. Gearing up, the Shangong A Kira hammer packs a punch with plus 25% exposure resistance. Also, the Larkwell Martinez O2 tank gives plus 20% health regeneration and plus 5% exposure resistance. Combine all these without the food buffs and husbandry talent, and you're rocking plus 117% exposure resistance. Then add the food buffs, and that's your golden ticket to stay longer in storms without taking damage. So, why does this matter? Picture a high-tier storm during a crucial mission or boss fight. Knowing when you'll hit full exposure and start taking damage could be the difference between success and failure. Chapter 4, Exposure Debuff and Its Effects, Max Exposure Debuff for Different Biomes in Prometheus. All right, folks, let's venture into the realms of Exposure Debuff, the aftermath of facing the raw fury of Prometheus's storms. It's not just a light drizzle, it's about to get intense. First off, what exactly is the Exposure Debuff? Well, imagine standing in the heart of a storm for too long. You're not just wet, you're exposed to the elements, and it comes with consequences. Now, every storm has its own unique flavor, and the effects vary based on the severity of the storm. But where it gets interesting is the max exposure debuff, the peak of exposure-induced misery. Let's break it down by biome, shall we? Prometheus offers us four distinct biomes, grasslands, swamp, arctic, and volcanic, each with its own set of challenges. Starting with the grasslands, where mild storms are the norm. I find myself really interested in Mexican weather lately. I don't know what it is. Oh, fuck me, Dad. It's good just to learn about other cultures and um, uh, precipitation. Like, yeah, I may not know what Yannette Garcia is saying, but a part of me is okay. It's okay with all of this. 33 degrees, 56%. Like, I get the bullet points. I get the bloody bullet points, and that's all you need. Minima, maxima, notchy. Yeah, all good. Fucking lightning, rain, it doesn't matter. Oh. Winds, rains, and maybe a bit of hail. But keep an eye out for lightning. It strikes, and it strikes hard. Swamp, on the other hand, is a different beast. Thick, putrid gases and acid fogs make visibility low, and trust me, you don't want to be wandering blind in this biome. Oh, and a heads up, putrid gas storms in the swamp, your food's not going to be happy. Spoilage rates spike up, so take cover before the storm worsens. Now, let's talk volcanic. Lava, ash, and sulfur. The trifecta of trouble. Building on top of sulfur pools, not advisable. It's a one-way ticket to a hot mess. And speaking of ash storms, clogging your processors and slowing down crafting. A dehumidifier might help, but hey, nothing's perfect. In the Arctic, prepare for snowstorms. It's not just scenic snowfall, it increases your food consumption. And if you're not careful, your flat rooftops might collapse under the snow's weight. Hailstorms are no joke either. Besides ramping up your food consumption, they can be a real pain, reducing your mobility and damaging you. So, prospectors, heed these warnings. Different biomes, different storms, and a whole lot of trouble if you're not prepared. Now let's move on to chapter five, 
Tips for Navigating These Treacherous Weather Conditions. Chapter 5, Tips for Different Biomes Storm Effects. Now, let's dive into some general tips applicable across all biomes. Preparation is your best friend. Before you set foot in a new biome, anticipate the weather and tailor your gear accordingly. Tip 1, mining into large rocks early in the game is a smart move. It provides shelter during storms, but here's a pro tip. If you're using the Lucky Strike talent, don't mine the whole rock, or you might find yourself stuck in a storm without cover. Tip two, now those simple build missions. Think of them as your safety nets. These missions encourage you to build watchtowers around the map, offering both shelter during storms and a nice buff if you rest or earn experience. Tip three, all storms reduce mobility. Tier 5 storms in the red zone will reduce it by 50% if you are fully exposed. And Tier 6 storms will reduce your movement speed by 61%. Tip 4. Oh, and for our weight-conscious prospectors out there, if you're caught in a storm while overweight and don't have a mount, and that movement speed debuff hits 100%, you're stuck. So, plan ahead and shed some weight before you're immobile in the storm. Now let's get biome specific, starting with the grasslands. It's the mildest biome, but lightning can be a game changer. If you're struck by lightning, a quick sip of water or a jump into a pool will douse the flames. Don't forget about lightning rods, strategically placed. They can prevent lightning from wreaking havoc on your structures. Now, into the swamp. Low visibility is the norm, thanks to the green fog. Consider the animal highlighting module to spot wildlife in these challenging conditions. Putrid gas storms mean accelerated food spoilage. So if you're carrying precious food, seek cover before the storm escalates. Acid fog storms will damage you and your equipment like your armor, scanner, extractor, tools and such. So seek shelter if you don't want a hefty repair bill. Volcanic biome, lava, ash, sulfur, and increased thirst too. Ash storms can be a headache clogging your processors and slowing down crafting. Dehumidifiers might help, but keep an eye out for potential fixes. Sulfuric storms near sulfur pools can be lethal. Building on top of a sulfur pool? Damage is imminent. Choose your base locations wisely, prospectors. Acid rainstorms will damage your metal buildings faster, so think ahead. It can get really hot here, but did you know you can craft ice water for better cooling effects than a regular canteen filled with water? Some ice and a thermos will reduce the heat by 15 degrees. And into the Arctic, where snowstorms and hail are the norms. Flat rooftops may collapse under the snow's weight. Consider using angled roof pieces to avoid disasters. The water canteen in your EnviroSuit slot might sound convenient, but in the Arctic, it leads to constant cool downs, causing the cold debuff. Keep it in your inventory or opt for a heated water canteen from the workshop. Polar bears are a real threat here. Become the matador you've always wanted. Learn how to tango with those cute and cuddly white bears. Maybe not, it's not a Coca-Cola commercial. Snowstalkers are tanky, fast, and do a lot of damage too. A weapon with an electroshock attachment will reduce their movement speed and their damage output. It's like it was made for this. What do you, what do you think is coursing through my veins right now? Cheese whiz. Lightning. Yeah, lightning. Lightning won't help you, pal. It's gotta be me. You saw what those stones did to Thanos? They almost killed him. None of you could survive. How do we know you will? We don't. But the radiation's mostly gamma. It's like... Uh, I was made for this. All right, prospectors, these tips should keep you a step ahead of Prometheus's storms. Stay vigilant, stay prepared, and most importantly, stay alive. And there you have it, fellow prospectors, the ins and outs of weathering the storm in Prometheus. We covered everything from the basics of the forecast system to biome, specific survival tips. A special shout out to Sarah from the official Icarus Discord for providing invaluable data on weather forecast patterns and specific storm durations. Remember, preparation is your greatest asset. Whether you're navigating grasslands or enduring the harsh Arctic winds, knowing the storms is half the battle. If you found this guide helpful, 
Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more in-depth Prometheus content. And for our seasoned explorers out there, share your storm survival tips in the comments below. As we sign off, remember, it's not just about surviving, it's about conquering Prometheus, storm by storm. Until next time, stay safe out there, prospectors.